Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. We're in the fish room. We're doing a bit of holiday prep. So uh, every year, if I go on holiday every year, I normally make a video beforehand saying you don't need to do anything special when you go on holiday, your fish will be fine. And normally that is true. But the last couple of years I've gone on holiday and I've had a bit of a disaster when we come back. So I'm flipping it slightly and we're going to try some of the tricks and the tips that people often give when you go on holiday. Um, and I have a couple of specific things that we need to try just because of the setup we've got here. If you don't watch anything else other than this, holiday feeder blocks are not the answer. Whatever the question is, they are not the answer. So at no point here am I going to endorse, recommend, say anything good about holiday feeder blocks. They're trash, don't use them. Thank you very much for watching, see you next week. But what I do quite like is the auto feeders. So things like this, where you can set a timer, it spins round and it drops a little bit of food into a tank. Um, I use them quite uh, a lot of the tanks, but the one thing I do is I take them off when I go on holiday because they do foul every now and again. Um, but if you use them when you're here and you can check things, you can go, ah, oh, right, that one's clogged, that one's broken, that one's dumped a load of food in. It's rare, but it does happen, and I quite like using them because I don't have to remember to feed if I've got certain tanks that I need to do that on. Um, but for a tank like this, this is my mega tank. This is my DIY eight foot by four foot by three foot tank with lots of big fish in it. And big fish have big pellets. And a lot of these auto feeders, they only have little small holes. So when I've tried to use it on a tank like this, you'll get one, maybe two pellets out of it. So most of the automatic feeders are using this kind of design where your food goes in here, but you're really limited to the size of pellet you can use. Oh, I can't even get my finger in there. And there's no way you can make it bigger. It does slide, this slides to make it uh, bigger and smaller in here, but it is limited. So that's the biggest possible pellet you can get and it's just nowhere near good enough. So. These, great, fine, I recommend them for smaller pellets and flake, but not good enough for this. And I do want to keep these fish fed when I'm away, so just for context, I'm going to be going away at the end of the month. I, I'm going away for about a week. They would be fine, they will not starve in a week. The water will not foul so much in a week that it's going to be a problem. Everything's going to be fine and all things will be fine. But they can be a little bit aggressive because they're so such big fish, big fish tend to be aggressive fish. And if I don't keep them fed up, I notice when I've missed a day of feeding or something, the aggression gets up a little bit. So if I can avoid it, I'll avoid it. And I think the way I can avoid it is by using a couple of these. So this is one that I've inherited. Um, I think I got it with a tank that I bought, but it's got quite a thin plastic cowl on it. And I think if I just modify this and make this a little bit bigger, rather than just spitting out one pellet at a time, I might get three, five pellets at a time. Uh, and another thing about this is I can set it to do four different feedings, I think, throughout the day. So if I just set that off to keep things topped off, keep the food going in, keep the aggression down, I can put in different, so I can put in a couple of feeders on this one, do some smaller ones for the small fish, some bigger ones for the big fish. That should keep things going. But the key to this is I want to do it now so I can run it for a couple of weeks while I'm here watching it to make sure it does actually work before I leave it on my own. Because the worst worst thing you can do is make a change to a system and then bugger off for a week and then come back and go, oh, it all went wrong. However could I have predicted this? So I'm just going to alter this. I'm going to make this all a little bit bigger. We'll get that set up on Mega Tank and see how it gets on. So I've modified it ever so slightly and might see it a bit better there. And just cut out this bit here. So as this whole side, um, that's the size of pellets that I've got in there, if you can see that. So, that should, in theory, turn. Let me just try it. I can do a manual one, see if it works. That's much better. Obviously, I need to move this over a little bit, but we can sort that out just to make sure it comes in. And that's a much healthier amount of pellets to come out. Happy with that. That's job number one, done. Um, I'm not gonna do this for every tank because, like I say, it's a special circumstance on this one. I'm worried about aggression. I'm not worried about it in the other tanks. I know they can all last. Um, but 
you know, the option's there if that works for you. Job number two, again, is a little bit niche uh, to my situation. I've got these tanks down here. These are where I keep my plants that I sell on my website. Quick plug, aquariumadventures.co.uk for all your aquatic needs. Well, some of them. Um, I keep my plants in here. What we've got is some old tanks, um, like an inch of water at the bottom. Make sure I keep a lid on them. And what I do is go around every day, just go in, give them a little spray, keep everything moisturized, nice and healthy. And the plants, they're meant to last a lot longer that way. You don't have to worry about algae and things like that. Um, I am copying JT. Thank you very much, Jack. Um, go and check out his channel. He gave me the idea to do it this way. I also got some plants up here, the submerged ones. So trying out different methods. But the way this is working out for me is I'm very forgetful. Me brain not worked good. So if I miss a couple of days here, they'll be fine. But if I miss a week, uh, getting bordering on problematic there. Um, it's just nice to keep everything nice and hydrated, keep the humidity up. You just need a little spray once a day. So I thought there must be a way to automate that. And there is. I bought myself one of these off Amazon. It's a rainforest spray system. It's basically a mister. You'll see them in like reptile keepers and things like that. Terrariums, they're big into them there. It's basically a timer, a little timer in a box uh, with an inlet and an outlet. You drop some hose that comes with it into a reservoir of water. That sucks up the water sprays it down there and it comes out through these little mister nozzles and does it for me so I can set a timer away we go don't need to come around and remember to mist it myself that's the plan anyway so we'll see if we can get this mounted and um, see how it looks and try it out again the key to all these things is I'm doing them long before I need them so as I can make sure they work and if they don't work I can plan around it Right, so finally got this set up. This is the mister. Um, <laughs> took a little bit longer than expected, so I gave up yesterday. But what we've got here is we've got the mist heads, um, one in each tank. That's the little spray head that it comes out of. So you put that in there. This is a two, two set up. So we've got one in that tank, one in that tank. I think it'd probably be better if it was just one tank. So I might swap this out for a bigger container and then have the misters firing into each other to give it a better spread. But that's fine. So that goes up there into the control box, which is this. And you can see there's two pipes there. So one is connected to the mister heads and one runs around the back and goes into this. So there's a, like a filter thing. That thing sits in there, draws water out of there and mists out of there. What it actually says is here it's got outlet and inlet and you'd think outlet would be spraying water out but no it means water from an outlet. <laughs> I don't know so that's why I gave up yesterday so I swapped these round and it now works. What you've got here is three options you can set how long it sprays for in seconds. So that can be up to a minute. So I think I'm gonna go for 15 seconds and then how often it stops for. So in hours, so up to 24 hours. So you can have it once every 24 hours. I'm gonna go for once every six hours. That kind of makes sense to me. And then when that takes, it should run it. So 15, 40, 13. And then if we look down here, that's it misting in. And it's pretty good as a mist goes. So I'm fairly happy with that. I get a decent coverage. We'll let it run for a few days, few weeks, and make sure it's doing what it needs to do. And then we should be good to go. So that's kind of it for the new stuff that I'm trying out here. The key takeaway from this is I'm doing it weeks in advance of going on holiday so I can make sure that they actually work. General other tips, I'll reiterate, feeding blocks are trash, do not use them. Um, but other things that I might do would be, again, weeks before I go anywhere, massive water changes everywhere. So I want to make sure everything is good. You don't want to make any big changes before you go. So a lot of people will make, oh, I'm going away on holiday for a fortnight, so I'll do a big massive water change now, the day before they go. 
that's where you introduce something or you kill off your cycle or something goes wrong. So do that a week before you go or two weeks before you go, making sure that everything's okay. So when you do leave, your fish will be fine. Um, also, don't worry. Don't, don't stress. Your fish will be fine. They'll, they'll cope without you for a week, 10 days, two weeks. I've left discus for two weeks several times and they've been fine. I've left them for three days and wiped out a tank. It's not going to be your fault, it's just going to be one of those things. It's luck of the draw, Murphy's Law, all those other things that you can say. Um, just don't stress about it. Do what you can in terms of making sure your tank is running well, everything's in good order, everything's clean, your water parameters are good. Don't do massive feeds before you go thinking you're doing a good thing because that will just lead to massive spikes in ammonia later. Just do everything normal. If you are going to change anything like I have, change it weeks in advance and everything should be well. Hope you enjoyed that, found that informative. Please come back in a month's time to see the inevitable disaster video. I killed all my fish. Hopefully not. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.